good evening. Please make your way to your seats. We will be starting in just a few minutes. We'll be starting in just about three minutes. everyone good evening good evening if you could make your way to a seat we are preparing to start good evening we have a few individuals coming in but as we're preparing to start would you do me a favor if you can hear the sound of my voice let's do this okay it's not because I'm looking for applause. I want to test sound to make sure that everybody, wherever you're sitting in this room, that one, you're as comfortable as you possibly can be given the heat and also making sure that you can hear from any corner of the room that you might be sitting. 
welcome, welcome this evening. In order to begin, I would like to start with a land acknowledgement. Seattle Public Schools acknowledges that we are on the ancestral lands and traditional territories of the Puget Sound Coast Salish people. I do like to give a moment for that to sink in before we start the program. Thank you. And thank you for joining Seattle Public Schools leadership and the school board of directors for the beginning of a very, very important conversation. I am your host, Beverly Redmond, Chief of Staff for Seattle Public Schools. I would also like to acknowledge that we are streaming this event and all of the sessions regarding well-resourced schools via SPS YouTube. Our SPS TV crew has been hard at work making sure that our technicals are set up so that we could extend our audience. We want to make sure that whatever way you're able to take in information, that that's accessible to you. So if you are a member in our extended audience, we welcome you. Certainly invite you, you will be able to hear every portion of the presentation from the microphone. However, when we have table conversations, you will capture the essence of it, but we will not have each table mic'd. We also want to welcome members of our media who may be in the, in the audience tonight, whether it is through YouTube or in person. They have been covering us and we certainly appreciate their efforts. And now to you, our families, our staff, welcome. We want you to be extremely comfortable tonight to put your voice in the room as you're having your table conversations regarding what's best for the future of our schools and for our students. If there are board members here, I see three at this moment, but wherever you are in the room, if you would step forward or stand, I would greatly appreciate it at this time. I want to thank our board members for being here. They have been alongside of us at each stop. We are on, I believe, the fourth installment of this conversation as we've been going throughout the district. And our board members have been right with us. You will see them tonight, not necessarily as members of your conversation at your table, but they will be walking, taking a look, seeing, listening for common themes, common experiences, they have incredible decisions that they have to make, and your input tonight will take them a long way. So again, thank you to our board members for being here. You are greatly appreciated. Thank you for that extra applause. Now, why are we here? We are here to share, as I mentioned, our ideas to reimagine our school system in the face of budget challenges as we believe we have an opportunity to get better, to get stronger, so that each student, teacher, family, you have access to the success or access to what you need for your vision of success for your students. We must evaluate how to create and pay for a just school system that puts every student on that path. We're calling this concept well-resourced schools. And tonight you will hear not only from me, but you'll also hear from Superintendent Dr. Brent Jones and also Dr. Ricardo Torres more on the concept. What are our goals? Our goal is indeed for conversation so that we can gather that input on not only well-resourced schools, but once we have your vision, your values, what's important to you, we'll be able to apply that not only to this conversation, but to future efforts that we have going throughout the school district. As mentioned, we've organized five engagement sessions in person. Again, we're on the fourth of five. Tomorrow, we conclude in person at Robert Eagle staff the same time, and we hope you're able to join us or encourage others to join the conversation. 
The final session will be an online session, which is August 29th. And that session already has about 300 respondents to it. So it is packing out. And you can imagine that the more opportunities that we have to spread the message, to hear more voices, the better the result will be. What is our timeline? It's important to share what we know as we begin this conversation. You have heard us mention and say it, and I want to put this in the room tonight, that there are no school site consolidations planned for, and I'm gonna say the year specifically, 2023-24. What we will do once we start school is to release a survey to all of our families. You can imagine this room is packed, but how many more parents need to hear? How many more parents need to provide input? So let us get started with the school year, and then we will release that survey. And once we have that information, coupled with what we've heard in our sessions, we're delivering that report to Dr. Jones so that he can make an incredibly important decision. He has said publicly in our other sessions, and the same is true tonight, that he is working toward a release date for that plan, November 2023. With that, it is time to hear from Dr. Jones. And I've said this in other meetings, we'll continue to say it. As a graduate of our district, as a parent, and certainly having gone through and worked at various levels of this particular school district, his desire is for students to have the same experience or greater, I put emphasis on greater, than what he enjoyed as a student. If it made him a superintendent, imagine what it can mean for generations of students to come. Would you please put your hands together for Dr. Brent Jones, our superintendent. <laughs> Thank you, Bev, and uh, thank you all for coming out on this cool evening. Uh, hopefully, uh, like, like me, uh, some, many of you are from here, and we get to complain about a week a year. Uh, let's remember this when it's October 25th and there's sideways rain hitting you in the neck, trying to figure out what are we gonna do, uh, what are we gonna do next? But nonetheless, I really appreciate everyone being here. This is a really important time for us we're trying to curate some, some knowledge, curate some experience from you all as participants in this enterprise we call Seattle Public Schools. Uh, thank you for entrusting us with your time today, but we're most, the currency that you have today is mostly your thoughts, your thoughts about well-resourced schools. We're talking about uh, how are we using building spaces? What type of programs do we want? What type of services do we want for our students? Just what kind of experience do we want our students to have as they come through Seattle Public Schools? So in the context of what we're looking at today is Seattle Public Schools, like many other school districts, locally, nationally, we're at a financial crossroads. And so we have to be prudent and diligent and judicious with our resources. We must evaluate how do we create and sustain a just school system. So when we talk about uh, well-resourced schools, we're talking about a system of well-resourced schools. You know, and the hard truth is, as much as we love every one of our schools, when they are under-enrolled, they are unable to provide the sufficient level of staff, services, programs, technology, and things like that for, our, for that are, that's best for our students. And so, some of the pretext of, of this meeting is not as a proxy for closing schools. We're looking at how do we best realize the resources and allocate them to where our priorities are? And so as we do that, we, have, we do this also in the backdrop of a, a lack of enrollment. And the lack of enrollment has led to a la this, this past year's $131 billion uh, deficit. And next year, we have a deficit of $104 million. And so there's a lot that we must do to really create the conditions for our students to thrive, and that's going to be being in touch with our priorities of, uh, of you and families and our students. So how will we address this? We have to appropriately fund our, our schools. And so we have uh, not the same amount of resources that we've had. 
and we have now what's called a structural deficit. But in order to, uh, sometimes somebody has said, don't waste a good crisis, and what we're gonna do is really focus in on what's most important, and again, that's what we're here to do today. And so, and we can do anything, we just can't do everything. And so that's what this, is, that's what this effort is about. How are we going to uh, take the, the, most, uh, the most pressing issues, address them, but at the same time, do what Seattle Public Schools does best. We teach, we do, we, our teachers are fantastic, our principals know what they're doing, and so we wanna make sure that we are focused on our most important endeavor, and that's teaching and learning. And so when we look at well-resourced schools, this, these are places where every student will have access to opportunities. Students will have the support, the programs, the services they need to succeed in the neighborhoods and where they live. So tonight, we wanna know what you think is a well-resourced school is, what a well-resourced school should be. Seattle is a city that has historically stood up for justice and equitable opportunities, and that's what we're here to do tonight. So uh, I wanna be clear once again, uh, in 2324, we are not consolidating schools, but what we are doing is doing an analysis based on what you all are telling us so that we have a direction that we can go together. And so before I turn this over to Dr. Torres, I wanna state that my team is gonna be uh, diligently and effectively working to collate all of this data and all this insight that you all give us today. We're gonna to try to do that quickly, turn that around. So as Bev said, uh, myself and my team can make some decisions here about what are we gonna do in our future? We have a strategic plan coming forward here soon. We have a budget uh, submittal that we need to make happen. And we also have to really take this information around how do we develop this system of well-resourced schools. So without further ado, I'm gonna hand it over to Associate Superintendent, Dr. Rocky Torres. Thank you so much. Good evening. I have the pleasure of sharing the logistics that we're gonna go over for the evening. And so I'm just gonna start off with just giving a little bit of a preview of what the run of show is gonna look like. So we're gonna have three distinct conversations. The topics are gonna be on school buildings and learning spaces, followed by support services and resources, and finally academic and extracurricular programs. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up with a framing question, then give everybody some thinking and writing time. We take about five minutes. At the end of those five minutes, there are facilitators in your area. So facilitators, please look around in case you gotta cluster some people together for conversations. And they will facilitate a conversation so that we can collect data on what are your thoughts around these different topics. There are scribes uh, dispersed throughout the area that are ca they're capturing notes on laptops as you speak lifetime. In addition, we encourage you to write your ideas down on the post-it notes. At the end of the conversation, I will say hands up for the facilitators and they'll all give us a hands up. And I will share out two to three large themes that we heard from walking around the space just so you all can get a little bit of feedback on what we're hearing. Then we're gonna have you take your post-it note and you're gonna see there's chart paper up around the room and you're just gonna post your post-it notes up. So for example, our first topic is buildings. You'll see one of those charts has a title of buildings. Any post-its, thoughts, wonderings, things you wanna share around buildings, you post it there so we can collect it. At the end, uh, Chief Redmond, Chief Beverly Redmond, our Chief of Staff, she will close us out. So without further ado, I'm gonna start us in our first topic for conversation this evening. So our topic is school buildings and learning spaces. School buildings and learning spaces. This topic is referring to the actual physical buildings of our schools. Framing question for you. What are your favorite things about our school buildings? What are your favorite things about our school buildings? And I'm gonna give five minutes of think and write time. Five minutes.
reminder, our first topic is school buildings and learning spaces. The framing question is, what are your favorite things about our school buildings? Three more minutes of thinking and writing time. Just over a minute of think and write time. As a reminder, our first topic is school buildings and learning spaces. Our framing question for the conversation is, what are your favorite things about our school buildings? Okay, facilitators, 15 minutes of conversation on this topic. Facilitators, 15 minutes of conversation on this topic.
Time check. 11 more minutes on this conversation. 11 more minutes with this conversation. Time check for facilitators. Eight more minutes on this topic and conversation. Eight more minutes.
facilitators four more minutes on this topic and conversation four more minutes Just over a minute, facilitators, about one more minute. Okay, facilitators, hands up. Hands up, facilitators. Thank you so much, Principal Kleiner. Peter Donovan, thank you so much. Who else I see? Katie Pearl, thank you. Dr. Campbell, thank you so much. Dr. McCarthy, Principal Dimsey, thank you. Principal Rose, thank you. Michaela, thank you so much. Direct Executive Director Carter, I see you. Okay, so we finished our first conversation. I'm gonna share a couple of the overarching themes we heard at multiple tables. One, the idea that people like the idea of a mix of old and new buildings, schools being in their neighborhoods and walkable to students, outdoor garden spaces and green spaces, performance spaces such as space for athletics, music, the arts, etc., and then student work in the school. So the artwork that's up and around on the walls actually represents the students of the school. If you could please take one minute and post your post-it notes up on the chart paper, one minute, and then we'll get into our second conversation.
Take about 30 more seconds to post your thoughts. 30 more seconds. Okay, facilitators, here we go. Here we go. Next topic. Next topic. Our second topic is going to be around support services and resources. Support services and resources. So when we think about this, this, uh, this could involve mental health supports, right now needs funds, uh, special education services, etc. So support services and resources. Framing question. How could we make resources and or services at each school stronger? Framing question for this topic. How could we make resources and or services at each school stronger? Please take five minutes of think and write time now. Just over three minutes. Once again, support services and resources. Framing question, how could we make resources and or services at each school stronger? Just under two minutes before conversations, just under two minutes.
Okay, facilitators, if you could, please begin conversation on this topic. Support services and resources, 15 minutes. Time check for facilitators. Ten more minutes on this topic and conversation. Ten more minutes on this topic and conversation.
Time check for facilitators, just over six minutes. Just over six minutes on this topic and conversation. Time check, two more minutes. Two more minutes on this topic and conversation.
Okay, facilitators, hands up. Facilitators, hands up. Thank you, Principal Rose. Thank you, Amy Kleiner. Thank you, Peter Donovan. I see you, Dr. James Mercer. Michaela, thank you so much. Pat Sander, thank you. Getting your first shout out of the evening. Okay, some of our themes for our second conversation, some of our overarching themes. Reminder, we were talking about support services and resources. There was some conversation around social skills support, mental health services, inequities between schools, particularly when it comes to PTSAs and funding, and wonderings about how we're leveraging technology in post-pandemic times. So those are some of the themes. If you could take one minute and post your notes, one minute and post your notes, and then we'll get into our final conversation of the evening. About 30 more seconds. Okay, facilitators, hands up, here we go. Final topic of the evening, our final topic. Our third conversation is going to be around academic and extracurricular programs. Academic and extracurricular programs. This is referring to things such as music, sports, etc. Framing question for the conversation. Framing question. What kinds of programs do you and or your student value the most and why? What kinds of programs do you and or your student value the most and why? Please take five minutes of think and write time. Reminder, it's academic and extracurricular programs. Framing question, what kinds of programs do you and or your student value the most and why? Three more minutes, think and write time, three more minutes.
just under two minutes before we begin conversation, just under two minutes. Reminder, we're on academic and extracurricular programs. The framing question, what kinds of programs do you and or your student value the most and why? Okay, facilitators, 15 minutes on this topic and conversation, 15 minutes.
time check. Nine more minutes. Nine more minutes on this topic and conversation. Nine more minutes. Five more minutes, five more minutes on this topic and conversation.
just over two minutes. Just over two more minutes. One more minute, facilitators, one more minute on this topic and conversation. Okay, facilitators, if you could, hands up, hands up, facilitators, for our last set of themes. Thank you so much, Principal Rose. Thank you so much, Principal Miller. Dr. McCarthy, thank you so much. Hands up, facilitators. We're ready to do our last set of themes. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Casey Dempsey. Thank you, Garrett Kishner. Thank you, Katie Pearl. Okay, here we go. Our last topic was academic and extracurricular programs. Academic and extracurricular programs. Some of the themes. Opportunities for students to pursue and discover passions. Consistent curricular materials among all schools. And choice in clubs based on student choice and not necessarily adult passions. So if you could take one minute to post your, your notes and then Chief of Staff Beverly Redmond will be joining us to close us out. One more minute. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We're going to wrap our session. As everyone is heading to their tables, to their seats. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for being here. And thank you for the time and effort as walking around, heard so many themes, so many conversations. And as we match these up with the other things that we've heard in different meetings, it is going to be very interesting. So I appreciate you very much for being here. The next thing I'd like to do is to thank a couple of people, groups of people. One, 
our interpreters. Would you please give them a round of applause? We just cannot make it an effective meeting without them. Said this and will continue to say it many times, just the unsung heroes, and it is good to shine a light on their efforts. Also, SPS TV, thank you so much for everything that you're doing. You allow us, and one of their goals is always to lift up as much live programming as we possibly can. So opening up the school district and making us feel a little closer. Thank you so much, SPS TV. To all of our facilitators, thank you. The time, the effort, they've spent already a long day but have volunteered to come here and it just shows their deeper commitment to this district and we really, really appreciate it. And finally, to you as parents, families, staff, thank you for being here. As we move on to Robert Eagle staff on Thursday, I want to review again what we came into the room knowing that there are no school closures or consolidations planned for this coming school year. We're taking the time to digest this information, submit it to Dr. Jones as he begins to digest, make sure that he has a plan ready for us in November. We will be anxiously awaiting that and also the staff members contributing to his effort. On tonight, I want to thank you for braving the heat also, the vice president being in town probably didn't help any commute today. So thank you again. I want you to remain cool, take care of your families, and get ready for the school year. Have a great evening.